Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Here's why referrals are a low cost but high reward marketing strategy. You know, (laughs) I started this podcast laughing because the amount of times that I hear people telling me that they get their clients from word of mouth or from referrals, yet they do nothing to foster the referrals is just hilarious. Okay. So it's not a matter of what it used to be before, because we're past the age where if you built it, they will come. You have to have some sort of promotional program in place okay and at the other at the end of the day we do know and are fully aware that we are influenced by those that are around us i think it was jim Rohn that mentioned that we are the average of the five people that we hang around with which means whatever we are exposed to is what we end up wearing, what we end up watching, what we end up reading. So nothing influences people more than a recommendation from a trusted friend and a trusted referral is the holy grail of advertising. So if you are going to be putting content out there, you've identified your market and you've clarified your message, you are going to need to have a fully fledged referral program in place in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But maybe we might have just jumped the gun a little bit there and have not actually fully explained what referral marketing is and what it's not. Because at the end of the day, referral marketing is known to be one of the most trusted uh, marketing approaches applied by both uh, small to large businesses globally. So coaches, consultants and small business owners have people singing their praises and talking about them at a barbecue somewhere right now or in a Zoom call, um, you know, sharing your content or uh, just outrightly being ambassadors of your work. So this type of marketing really aims at encouraging and increasing the number of new clients through word of mouth referrals because when you're told something by somebody you trust that actually transfers the trust um, that the person already has for whoever is telling them and this is usually done um, usually if you're a coach or consultant sometimes you want to offer incentives rewards or just encourage customers to recommend Uh, your business products and services to other people. But you want to be careful about this because some people don't want, um, you know, the the fact that they're being given an incentive to be shown somewhere on, um, you know, your your website and you know that might actually deter people from referring people to you. So we're going to be looking at all of that in this podcast today. But if we're not talking about just referral marketing um, in this uh, podcast today. Today, I want us to take a look at why actually having a referral program is important because if you're not measuring anything, um, you know, in your marketing, it's not going to be improved upon. And also, if you have a program in place, it actually helps your customers recommend your products and services with ease, knowing there's a process that you follow. So you need to identify the ways, the channels and the incentives that you're going to use in order for you to help yourself succeed. All right. So, you know, these days, everybody is on social media. Everybody is on some sort of platform like WhatsApp or Instagram where they can see what their peers are using, what their peers are wearing and what their peers 
are reading, all right? So how can you as a business owner or marketing team capture more sales and growth in this day and age, um, you know, of social media and uh, where people share information with one another uh, so you can fuel the growth of your business. All right, so let's maybe look at what you're doing right now within your marketing. You're probably advertising on Facebook. You're probably advertising on Google. You're probably advertising on LinkedIn. And you are measuring your advertising success, okay? Now, the reason to spend money on advertising is to get new clients, and that's a given, or to make new sales from old clients. And when you, when, why then do we allow ourselves to be sold on impressions, okay? Do we measure um, how many times people have seen our ad and put that as a KPI, um, even if it doesn't result in sales, you know, even if 1,000 or 100,000 people see your offer, yet no one buys, it makes no difference how many people have actually seen it. And the same goes with referral marketing. Even if people are talking about you at a barbecue and they don't end up turning up at your doorstep for you to help them with uh, solve the problems that you solve, then obviously whatever referral marketing uh, that you refer to is not working. The only measure of success of any advertising or strategy ought to be sales, new clients, or a boost in your income. Something that directly uh, demonstrates the effectiveness of that strategy. All right. Um, I've got a question for you. Do you actually know how much it costs you to get a client? I'm not talking how much you pay per day for your advertising. I'm not talking about how much it costs you to pay your sales team. I'm asking what the actual cost per client is because you will be surprised. A lot of people don't know this number and they wouldn't know how much they're willing to buy customers because if you know how much it costs you to get customers, wouldn't you be able or wouldn't you be willing to put in as much in order to get more uh, of the customers that you're after? So for you to correctly measure the success of any advertising or marketing strategy, we must calculate the cost of advertising per client or per customer or per patient, depending on your profession. Simply, you want to div divide the advertising expense for the month by the number of new clients or uh, sales or whatever income that would have come um, in your business. So you want to do this for your for the past year or the past month in order for you to get a clear picture of the baseline cost per client. So let's say you spent a thousand dollars, um, you know, um, in, in, in the previous month on your marketing, and then you got 10 clients. That means your client acquisition cost is $100 per client. So if you are clever, you would go in and say, next month, if I'm going to want 20 clients, you just increase um, you know, your ad spend to maybe $2,000. And eventually, if your math worked out well, you'll be able to get 20 clients from that. Okay, And then there's something that we call sticker shock. All right. So if you use the wrong measure um, of your advertising or marketing strategy success, it can lead to what we call sticker shock. And when and and when it's not about the impressions or pieces distributed, but about new clients, suddenly even very cheap advertising or cheap promotion becomes very expensive when it doesn't end um, or result in any people making a purchase from you. The thing to do is make your promotion more effective and not less uh, spend less on any advertising. Now, this sticker uh, shock is where you're getting customers that Yes, they might do the first thing that you ask of them, but they don't buy the rest of your products. And one of the things that we are doing when we're um, putting adverts out there uh, as coaches, consultants, and small business owners is we're actually attracting our competitors who are just 
um, stick, you know, sticking their nose into our business. All right. You have to really understand who your absolute customer is. And when you do know who your absolute customer is, then you will know that if you put money at the top of the funnel, those people are definitely going to convert when they, um, uh, you know, come up at the bottom end of the funnel. So if the cost per client is down, you will have more customers. All right. Now, the point then that I'm trying to put up across is, is to bring the cost per new client down when bringing in more clients than ever. All right. And the fastest ways to do this is to spend a little bit of money on your referral program. The reason why we say this is if you've already attracted the right kind of people with the right kind of pain, all you got to do is make them help you find similar people to them. All right. That now makes it super, super easy for people to actually start working with you. You, 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 you reach out to the ideal customer and then incentivize that ideal customer to bring their friends, their relatives, because you can understand and you would know that those people are willing and able to make purchases from you. All right. Um, but obviously, the it doesn't come without its own problems. You know, the, the there's a problem with uh, referral programs, so to speak. And I'll be telling you how to do it well, because when your customers refer clients to you, it's only because they have confidence in the work that you're doing. They actually feel that by lending or sharing or exposing themselves and your expertise to a friend, um, they're letting. Uh, let's say they're letting letting them in on what chiropractor or what car repair shop or which shop, um, you know, or which consultant or which coach, um, you know, they can be opinion leaders or influencers to their friends. So some of them are just happy with your service that you've provided that they actually just want to pay you back. And, you know, that's where reciprocity comes into play. And neither of these impulses um, include them wanting to get something, all right, from you. Um, they just want to give something back, all right? So you want to be careful when you're creating your referral programs. Um, maybe some people just don't want an incentive, you know, because when we do referral programs that, you know, are published on our websites, you know, um, where we are telling people that you get a reward for re re referrals, it actually confuses the giving something and getting something uh, that your client is going through. Your client just wants to reciprocate, all right? They've already received from you whatever value that you're giving uh, to them. They don't want to receive anything as an incentive on top. So you want to be careful um, how you approach this because those people who would um, you know, th th those people who would uh, refer because they're happy with your service may be put off by a published referral program, thinking that their friends may actually then see it and wonder if that's the reason why they were referred to you. And that's why the influencer marketing space is falling on its face because people are reading through the whole, oh my God, look at this, um, you know, software that I'm using. Look at this gel that I'm putting in my head. When people are, um, you know, advertising for the competitor again in three posts down the line. See, I saw an influencer who was advocating for Grant's toothpaste. And just down the line, they were talking about Colgate toothpaste. You know, that then is a conflict of interest. Which side are you? Are you just, um, ref um, you know... Um, Referring these products because somebody is paying, um, you know, your, you know, he's paying you for the referral program. Okay. So some people don't want that. You know, you want to check which customers of yours um, are actually okay with the incentives of referring people. Okay. And a better program is to send maybe each person who refers a client a personal thank you note uh, signed by you, the owner of the business. And this may actually be accomplished by maybe sending them flowers or a bottle of wine or what we do for our business. If you refer clients to us, we might ask you if you're a whiskey drinker or wine drinker, and then we send you um, 
you know, from our Amazon account, um, you know, whatever it is of your choice. Or we can ask you if you have a book in your, um, what do you call this, in your Amazon wish list that you are longing to buy, we can actually buy that for you as a thank you for a referral. So in, in, in essence, you know, it's, it's just a nice way to thank your people instead of having it written uh, in the fine print of your website, which just puts people off, all right? So if you acknowledge that people, um, you know, are always going to want to refer um you know um you know their friends and family to you and if you acknowledge people for their for the behavior that you actually want you are likely to see more of that behavior it's like dealing with kids if you continuously praise things that you don't want you're going to get more of the same uh thing from your um you know from the kids but if you praise uh the 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 type of behavior that you like your customers will feel uh, obligated to do more of that activity that you are, you know, um, acknowledging them for, all right? And um, if, you know, just do the above. Try not to publish that you have a referral uh, mechanism. And whenever you get customers coming to you, um, ask them how they heard of your business. And when you know who the person is, just reach out to them and acknowledge them um, you know, for having sent uh, people your way, all right? And the reason why you actually need a referral program and, you know, the benefits it actually has is, like I said earlier on, we are past the age where if you built it, they will come. You have to have some sort of a promotion uh, program in place and um, help people to find you, all right, in order for them to, um, you know, uh, help their friends uh, solve problems um, that they might be facing, all right? So there was a study by Nielsen that revealed that approximately 92% of um, consumers from various markets are more inclined to believe people who are in their own circles. Yes, you can advertise and have all the impressions that you might have, but maybe those people are not going to buy from you because people buy from those that they know like and trust and this is because people you know and trust are less likely to mislead you so peer-to-peer -peer marketing is now a very valid and leading driver behind 20 to 50 percent of all purchasing decisions that are happening out there in the marketplace so you don't want to be missing out and thinking that people are referring your work without actual um, you know, um, you know, moving them forward or actually um, acknowledging it when it happens because all the time you want to be building relationships and a community around your work and you want to be building um, loyalty and eventually ambassadors, um, you know, people that are going to be sneezing and spreading your idea virus and a community that can support themselves from a mile away that they are dealing with you then all right so in any case there's also 96 percent of people that are already discussing brands uh online and even if they don't follow those brands or they don't even follow the pages but they're talking online which means most business word of mouth isn't coming from your personal social media accounts but it's coming from uh, others. So you want to be able to listen in uh, as to when, when, when it's actually happening or when people are talking about your brand, there are tools that you can use um, for um, online listening or online reputation uh, management. Okay. One thing that us as business people, coaches and consultants do not realize is that Referrals actually remind customers why they choose to purchase from your company. Every time somebody stands for your business, um, in their mind, they are strengthening the validation that, yes, you are a good service provider. You know, when a customer refers a friend um, or their close colleague or a family member to a certain product or service, they're actually explaining the reasons and the benefits why purchasing from your business is the best option. And we all know that the more 
you repeat um, certain things in your head, it actually creates a validation um, that what you're doing and what you're saying is absolutely correct. Okay. So you want to arm your customers with the right kind of information so that they can educate others along the way. So this is where content actually comes into play, you know, because if somebody is talking about you in a boardroom, you want to give them enough ammunition through blogs, articles, podcasts, that they are making the right decision when they're referring you or becoming um, an advocate of your work. Okay. So, if you're putting content out there, it actually allows customers to scout for potential clients while giving them reasons why they should be, um, you know, uh, participating in, 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 in whatever, you know, solution solving you're doing. All right. And you also need to be able to identify and create these customer av advocates uh, within your business because there are always people that when you... Um, you receive a new customer, you hear that they were the person that referred, you know, you always have 20% uh, of your customers that refer 80% um, of your referral, you know, uh, traffic. So customer referrals may either be awarded or uh, rewarded, depending on the number of people that they have sent across um, to you. All right. So this means that your business actually considers your customers efforts as meaningful and worth something. People will always, um, you know, support a wall that they helped to build. So allow, uh, people to have the, you know, empower people to have the power to actually speak your praises and give them the ammunition to do so. All right. Like I said, um, you know, people would uh, um, help you build this company because it's, wherever we are, our customers are seeking um, for belonging. They're seeking for connection. They're seeking for status. So if the work that you do makes somebody look good, if they refer you. So let's say, um, you know, like I did the last time we were sitting at a dinner and uh, my sister-in-law uh, was going to go into the market so she could buy a house. I referred from my network a real estate agent. I referred from my network um, a conveyancer, and I referred from my network a mortgage broker. So all these three um, individuals got this piece of business just simply because it made me look good to feel connected to people in higher places. All right. So your customers want to feel like they're contributing or doing something, allow them and empower them to have the freedom to refer you. Okay. So, you know, do you want to give your customers more reasons to thank them? Because customers who work, um, you know, with a referral team feel like they're actually contributing to your team's success. So you want to share their enthusiasm and thank them for their efforts for those referrals. All right. So let's say you've got Instagram or you've got some sort of uh, platform that you can talk about them, you know, just uh, boost their self-esteem because a lot of people are just doing it for status. So if you reward them for their efforts, they will uh, most likely continue supporting you and referring more and continuing to buy from you too. So now you see why I'm saying and why I laughed at the start of this podcast, because a lot of people think that they're actually, you know, doing a lot of referral marketing uh, while they're not incentivizing those that are actually um, bringing them that referral traffic. All right. And one thing is maybe people speak it in this way because there's a marketing or there's a business psychology around thinking that referrals show that your business is performing well. All right. Um, but if I'm a digital marketer, I know that if somebody says, oh, we get our uh, clients through word of mouth, it's just an ego boost for them. They're actually not getting any business coming their way. All right. Because it's easier to refer someone to a good organization that um, offers quality products and services where than one that has got uh, you know bad customer care 
All right. So the fact that customers can speak well of your business to somebody and encourage them to become new clients shows that your business is good and reputable. All right. So you want to make sure that you have created an environment that people are confident in your service provision that will then foster, um, you know, a community around what it is that you're doing. And people would not be embarrassed to talk about you at a barbecue. All right. And once you have, um, you know, all of these referrals coming in, like I mentioned, you know, the more somebody refers your business, they're actually strengthening the reasons why they're working with you, which definitely then improves your customer retention. All right. Because customers would take part in uh, referral programs or people that are, um, have sold themselves on your business. They're definitely obligated to stay because they don't want to, uh, re re renege or, you know, turn back on their word of what it is that they've already said yes to. All right. So from a marketing perspective, engaging new customers, um, you know, are usually, um, it's usually more costly compared to actually retaining your existing customers. So, um, you know, it, it costs a lot more money for you to get new customers than for you to sell more things and create more relationships um, with your current customers. Okay. And one thing, once somebody is staying within your business and you've retained them, referral clients become more valuable to a business. Right. Because customers who have been referred to your business have already formed a positive attitude towards your company. They have already transferred whatever trust they have from the person who's referring them to. And they've already been informed maybe about the benefits that uh, come with choosing your work or they have seen for themselves that your coaching or your consulting has given results. Um, you know, to their loved one. All right. So this actually makes it easy. And people that have been referred to you um, will have expectations because, um, you know, the referring person would have told them, oh, it took me six months. It took me three months to actually get SEO results. And they already can manage their own expectations. All right. Because when you're referred to somebody, there's already a trust factor there and these clients have an average uh longer lifetime value than somebody who has come through maybe um ads and people that you're looking um at um you know you know you know through um advertising and stuff like that so it actually helps that you create a separate funnel uh for your business to truly maximize your return of investment um on your referred customers and once somebody has been referred to you they have to go through a really extensive onboarding process because they're already sold on your business you don't need to sell them you just really need to make sure um you know that they are happy with the decision that they have made okay and once people are talking about your business it just increases customer engagement around your services and your products because if you've got a properly formulated um, referral marketing system it actually provides your business with a strong online presence you now have people that are talking about your business 24 7 you now have uh, ambassadors you know and uh, for lack of a better term you now have sneezers that are spreading your ideas okay this is because a lot of uh, many, uh, you know, many referred clients want to learn more about that organization. And the easiest way for them to do this is either through your social media pages or uh, your website. And then that increases uh, or lowers the bounce rate. And, you know, the amount of time that people are actually spending on your website, which is actually one of um, the KPIs that Google has. Um, in order for you, for them to rank your website, et cetera, you know, and once people are sold on your ideas, you always have repeat purchases. And once you have repeat purchases that creates recurring income, you're no longer just a one click wonder. You're actually, uh, getting people that are buying from you more and more and more. All right. So at the end of the day, um, you just really want to make sure that when sales are running low, 
look at your customers all right i know it can be hard to ask um for the sale but asking for a referral may be an easy thing because look at your customers that are doing well and say hey listen um you know this is how we we get our business so if you um help us then we'll be able to provide you with more um you know incentives all right so at the end of the day don't just think people are sitting uh you know on their computers uh doing word of mouth you know clicking away sharing your stuff incentivize them ask them and just create the energy around that because referral um programs work uh you know studies like i've mentioned in this podcast have proven that people will twice as likely consider product recommendations that they've been given by somebody that they already trust and this marketing strategy has been used by different organizations even jesus had referrals he had 12 of his ambassadors that would go further than him and then they would prepare um you know the people about his coming so that when he comes he just shows up um you know at um at, at a mountain and he starts speaking because people already had ideas of who he was and what he was going to preach and all he would go up and show up to people is who do you say i am so at the end of the day um it's not once you build it that will come it's about having that foundation and the tools to help you bridge these gaps i can't wait to see uh, your marketing uh flourish and you creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable and like i said earlier on referrals are really low cost but they are high reward bye for now Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So, look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.